Hey everybody, this is my thoughts on Neo Tokyo. This is a source mod that was actually first released as far as its full-on release went back in 09. And it's finally received a release on Steam as a standalone as of a few days ago. The ironic part being it was greenlit two years ago, so it took quite a while getting it on Steam, but they finally got it on there and... It saw some interesting issues when it was first launched. There weren't anywhere near enough servers, for instance, so you couldn't get into a game. They were all full. And now that there's more servers in there, you're able to actually get into games and actually be able to play it. And already I was seeing fairly similar issues to what happened last time with Neo Tokyo, which was a real shame, because it was a very interesting uh, mod when it first came out, and it received a lot of praise. It was uh, given things like Mod of the Year awards, and things like that, or at least coming close to getting them. But it never really saw a huge community. It saw a fairly small but dedicated community that still remains to this day. But it never really received a huge amount of widespread player base. And that's partly because of the way it plays which I'll get to in a moment. The first thing is how well it holds up even several years down the line. It looks like about what you would expect as far as a source mod from the time goes. They haven't really updated it much for the uh, new release. They've just ported it over to the newer version of the source engine. And it looks fine. It looks like a mod. And that's pretty much all you expect, really. The animations aren't particularly impressive. But... The way they've gone about the art style is what really sets this apart from so many other things out there. So even though you don't have phenomenal texture quality, phenomenal modeling and animation, the art style is so cyberpunky, uh, ghost in the shell inspired stuff that you really don't mind it as much. The aesthetic really does pay off for this game in dividends. So... They've got a very nice art style that manages to pull the whole thing together, even though it's not visually impressive or anything like that. The other thing to note about the presentation is the soundtrack. It has an excellent soundtrack that they actually released for free. Uh, I'll have a link to that as well if you want to check it out. It's a very solid soundtrack that is very different from most other games out there there's it's kind of hard to describe actually you, you kind of just have to hit listen to it yourself to understand what i mean but it's very atmospheric and does a phenomenal job for what it is and then there's the sound effects and they're just not that great uh particularly weapon sounds aren't all that beefy so that that was the one thing that really let me down and the uh presentation I don't remember them being that wimpy, but it's been so long since I played the original mod that I may have just forgotten it. So, the presentation holds up in some ways, it doesn't hold up in others, but that's not what really matters here. What really matters is it's a multiplayer FPS, and it's going for a more tactical approach than most other FPSs out there. And I think that's what actually scared people away from it, from the earlier releases of the mod, in that it's not really something that's easy to get into, per se. You may think, when someone describes it as Counter-Strike meets Ghost in the Shell, it's like, oh, I play Counter-Strike, that mean, must mean that I'll be good at it. No, not really. Things handle very differently. There's uh, some very different mechanics that actually come into play, particularly with cloaking. Yes, you get thermoptic camo, which is basically just a cloaking device. You can turn invisible for a short period of time. And depending on which class you're playing, that can be either a fairly long period of time or a not so long period of time. You have your light, medium, and heavy classes. They are the recon, assault, and support classes. And they play out pretty much how you would expect, only they have some slight differences between them. For instance, the support class is obviously very heavily armored, they are slow moving, they get heavy weaponry, but they're also really good for countering cloaking, because they have the best vision mode of them all. The assault class is a medium class that 
is basically a good all-rounder. They don't really excel at anything, but um, they're just good for if you're wanting something that's middle of the road. And then there's the recon class, which is actually really hard to play because they have pretty much no armor whatsoever, so they take tons and tons of damage, and they're very easy to bring down. They don't have the most powerful weapons, but they also get uh, longer cloak periods, and their vision mode is actually not like the other two classes where they get heat vision. Instead, you get just night vision, so it's actually not quite as useful, and you have to balance that out somehow. Well, the recon class is really fast, and they have a long period of cloak, so that's where they really shine, getting behind enemy lines and taking out enemies from behind them rather than uh, going head-on like a support class or an assault class would. And it's this interplay between the classes that you don't really see all that much in pub matches. Unfortunately, a lot of people just don't know how to play the game. And so you end up with situations where people just kind of run around like chickens with their heads cut off. I mean, admittedly, I do that sometimes. It's been quite some time since I've played Neo Tokyo, so I'm still not entirely used to going back into it. But... I do have a vague idea of how to play. I did play it before. I do remember it. And I remember that if you had a good team, if you had two good teams, in fact, and you were working together as a team, paying in mind that it is a more tactical, slow-paced FPS experience, and you're trying to get those interplay between the classes going then the game was just an absolute blast to play. There's only two modes in it. There's TDM and Capture the Ghost. Capture the Ghost is one flag CTF, basically. And so you have to find the ghost, which is a, a an android torso somewhere in the map. It's randomized. And you have to get that to the extraction zone. Now, when you pick that up, all you can use is your sidearm and you move really, really slowly. So, you have to keep that in mind. So, what that's going to entail is that you need to keep that guy covered, because it's actually very easy to go down in this game. And you may think things like, oh, well, the, the, the camouflage, the, the cloaking device should help you out there. Well, yes, but you still have to be careful with it. You can still see enemies who are cloaked if you're paying attention. And if they are stupid about it and go into cloaking in the middle of the open, there's actually a bright flash, so you can still see them even if they're there. And the way they've actually balanced out the cloaking, it ends up not coming across as something like in, say, Crisis, where it could actually be a pretty big problem sometimes. And you would just get snuck up on constantly and just meleeed up the wazoo. That doesn't really happen in Neo Tokyo. You might get snuck up on, but you still have a chance so long as you're, you know, a medium or heavy class. And even though it is fairly easy to go down, you do have to pay attention to how the weapons handle in this game. They handle very differently from most other FPSs. In fact, it's kind of hard to figure out exactly how they handle. Because when you're not aiming, aiming, just there's no aim down sights in this game, just aiming, it zooms in with a crosshair, there is no crosshair. So you have to aim to actually get the crosshair going, which means you move slower, and it zooms in, and then you find out that it doesn't react to when you're actually uh, firing, so you have to pay more attention to your actual... Uh, control and figure out how each individual weapon handles because they do handle differently. And a lot of people just aren't willing to put up with that sort of thing. Not anymore. It's a real shame. I mean, people who play Counter-Strike are fairly good at that sort of thing. Uh, we get used to it. And it works out okay in something like Neo Tokyo. Even though you don't get a lot of feedback, per se, on how everything handles, you do have to do just a lot through trial and error. And the game doesn't really do a great job of teaching you, even though it does have these tool tips that pop up every time you spawn. It's just one of those games where it's just not easy to get into. And even though it can be really fun, if you're playing with teams who don't know what they're doing, it's just going to end up being a mess. 
And that's the exact problem I've found with going back into it after all these years and going into it with a bunch of new people who just don't know what they're doing. They kind of run around like chickens with their heads cut off. They charge right into battle. I mean, again, admittedly, I do some of that too. But it just ends up being a weird experience because you know underneath that, and if you get the right people playing, it's an absolute blast. You're working as a team. It's that kind of tactical mindset that you don't really get with a lot of FPSs these days. And it's just a satisfying FPS experience, even though it does have its problems, even though it does have its quirks. So it's one of those kind of things where I can recommend it, but it's not something I can recommend easily. And that's because even though it does have that cool aesthetic, even though it does have these cool changes to the gameplay, even though it does have the the whole premise and everything going for it, and when you do get that good team together, it's just a blast. Well, unfortunately, you have to get that good team together. And if you're just playing with random people, it can be a drag. Sometimes it isn't, but it can be. And sometimes it's really, really terrible. Just depends on your luck of the draw, really, unfortunately. So if you find a good community, stick with it. Because they're going to help you actually have an absolutely great time playing Neo Tokyo. But unfortunately, if you just run around and find any number of communities that aren't actually communities, they're just a bunch of people who hopped into the server one time, well, it's not going to be all that fun. And it can be an incredibly frustrating game to get used to because you just don't know how everything handles. You go down left, right, and center, and you're just kind of like, well, what did I do wrong? And what were they using? And blah, blah, blah. Well, it's one of those games you have to be patient with. A lot of people aren't willing to put up with that. But I guess it's because I'm more used to tactical FPSs, so that's probably why I have such an easy time to actually getting into Neo Tokyo. Even though it can be frustrating. Even though it can be a real drag when I'm playing with teams who don't know what they're doing. So yeah, Neo Tokyo is still fun. It's probably going to have a fairly limited run, which is a shame because it deserves more than that. And it'd be kind of cool if it managed to get picked up by, I don't know, maybe Valve, maybe somebody else. And turned into a proper full standalone game that builds on what the mod did and makes it even better. I could see that happening, but the question is, is there a market for it? And I don't know. I guess we'll see. Now, admittedly, I haven't looked at the server numbers and player numbers for a couple of days now, but when I was actually playing this thing before I recorded this video, we were having a pretty hard time actually getting into games because they were mostly full. And there weren't all that many servers. That may have evened out by now. I know that when I was actually recording this thing, there were more and more servers popping up, so that might certainly help. But um, if you're having issues getting into games because the servers are full, I see that's actually kind of a good thing. We'll see. At any rate, Neo Tokyo is worth checking out. So go ahead and follow that link in the video description box so where you can grab it on Steam. And maybe we'll see each other online sometime. Catch you guys in later videos.